Hi, Jen. Hello. How are you doing? I'm so good. I'm so good. How are you? I'm really good. The sun is shining here and it makes my heart really happy. And that just hasn't been the case for the last like five months. So Still cheers to that. Life. You know, the winter's all too long. Right. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Where? Just, just no sun at all. Yeah. Well, and I'm like, that's not so much the case here. Like I live on the West coast of Canada. We, I, I do believe that I live in the most beautiful place in Canada, mm. aside from maybe like the far sweet little islands over on the East. And it's been really dark and gloomy. And so it's, it's quite nice to have it and the opposite. Where are you living right now? Where are you? I live in Texas. You live in but Texas. From, from Michigan. Okay. Yeah. All I hear is Beyonce in my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> that is forever now I mean Texas had its own vibe and everything for so long and then that song came around and it was just what's she doing girl she it hijacked it hijacked Texas she really did she reclaimed it she totally reclaimed it okay thank you what are you <laughs> bring it back Kyla bring it back <laughs> the conversation what are you what is Jen reclaiming these days oh. You know, the first thing that popped in my mind in my body was um, my creativity. Mm, mm, Something that mm. I don't know if you can relate to this, that um, I never really was taught or, or, or it wasn't in environments to express mm -hmm. creativity. You mm -hmm. know, and I realized up until about a year ago that I was thinking that like achievements in doing things equaled creation. Yeah. When in reality, mm -hmm. like I was just checking, I was a master at just moving forward and checking things off the to-do list. And so yeah. I'm really, I've been in a space, honestly, for about a year now where I've just yeah. been reclaiming and meeting and understanding and working with, with true creativity. And it's been quite a journey. Okay. Thank you for that. I do. I do resonate with that a lot. And I felt like we were going to go here at some point, but it's just going to take us right in. I trust and tell me more about it, but is that is this what happened in your business? Cause I know that there was a big change in the last little while in your business where you like burned a piece of it to the ground, which was highly successful, which I imagine maybe came from that, like forging forward, doing the things, checking, doing, yeah. and now like your energy and your Instagram and the way you're doing your business and showing up online is, I mean, it was beautiful before, but there is a tangible difference. Mm -hmm. So do you want to, yes, tell me. Please tell me what happened. Yes, of course, of course. Well, I wouldn't say I burned a little bit to the ground. I burned the whole darn thing to the ground, yeah, okay. um, which was, you know, I still look back and I'm like, wow, you are crazy. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Just, just, um, you know, I was being asked to truly learn and deeply learn and embody the art of detachment and mm -hmm. you know, I had a incredibly successful business. So mm -hmm. grateful for what I was able to build. It was a, over a million dollar business two years in a row and mm -hmm a lot of things occurred at all at one time. And I just woke up and was like, I can't do this anymore. I, there's something more I am, you know, I was a business coach. So my, my, my work was very heavily on helping people grow and scale businesses, massive attachments to money, right? Everyone's mm -hmm. like, I want a million dollar business. I want a half a million dollar business. I want this. And so my, my mm -hmm. work literally just became help people make money. Yes. They were doing incredible things. Yeah. Yes. They were making an impact in the world, but it was, it just got to be to a space where I'm like, this doesn't light me up at all. And also, yeah. yes, my business model was very forge it, go forward more, do this, do that. And for a while, you know, when you run on patterns and conditioning that are, that are rooted in survival and that are rooted mm -hmm. in needing to be seen or needing to be accepted or needing to succeed, mm -hmm. then, you know, those patterns will take you it's like a drug. It'll take you quick and it'll take you fast and it'll take you oh, quite some time, but everyone gets to a point at one point in time when foundations are running on patterns from childhood that it mm -hmm. has to stop. And I just, I crumbled it all to the ground. I mean, I kept five to 10% of my, of my revenue uh, like online, like, cause I was working with clients yeah. and I literally left a million dollars on the table and took a year year to just be like, who am I? What am I? Why am I here? What are my values? Um, there's a lot of detangling. There was a lot of healing and there was a mm -hmm. lot of, um, 
<laughs> there's a lot of dark nights of the soul. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember my journey when I felt like a dark night of the soul meant like you have one your whole life. You know, like just one, right. one dark night. It's like a day. <laughs> yeah, it's like one night and then you wake up and you're like, oh, I'm better now, right? Well, I had a rude awakening when I realized it could be like, yeah. right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Be like an entire year. Um, yeah. And yeah, and creativity came out of that. I love that. It's like the feminine, she like rose right up. What were some of the, like, how did you walk yourself through that? Did you seek support? Did you like, was it solo? How did you walk yourself through that? You know, I tried solo for, for a little bit of time. I had, I've always been the lone wolf, to be honest with you. I've had Mm -hmm. tons of friends, you know, really connected, but I've loved to be alone. I just love to do things alone. To call it being a mm-hmm. two more emotional projector. I don't, a Taurus, I don't care what we call it. It's just, it's just that I've always mm-hmm. loved to do things alone. So in the beginning when it happened, I um, was alone and I got to a point a couple of months in that I was like, there are things that I don't understand. There are mm-hmm. things that feelings that I'm feeling that I've never felt before. Mm-hmm. And so I, I had the most incredible therapist ever. I was, I was yeah. to be honest with you at that point in time, I was really burnt out of seeking coaching support. Um, yeah. I actually went through a season of, and I'm, I don't know if you've ever been here too, where I was resenting like coaching in general. I went, mm-hmm. had a huge falling out in my, in my life with um, a business relationship. And I was truly just like resenting coaching. Um, and I realized a lot of the coaching that I had received for years were other people projecting what they think is best for me onto me. And right. it was what that was part of the detangling was just getting into a space where I was like, I need someone who's outside of the industry. I need somebody mm-hmm. who has no idea what I do or who I am and just support me with my psyche and, and understanding why I'm here and supporting me and getting out of it. And yeah. about a month into our work together, I kept telling my husband, I was debatably depressed. I was like, yeah. I'm just deb- debatably depressed. I'm just tired, you know, whatever it is. And, and I remember my therapist looked at me dead in the face and he's like, Jenna, you have every single symptom of depression. Mm-hmm. And I stopped and I was like, I don't, I don't have time to be depressed. Mm-hmm. And he's like, exactly. You know, and it was something that I realized in that moment in time that I was, you know, I've been the helper my entire life. I've kept everything together for the good of my family, my entire life. I've donated mm-hmm. my entire life to be of service to others. And it was a time that it was just like, just stop and actually look at yourself and mm-hmm. work on yourself and your connection to God and your connection to spirit and your connection with the work that it is that you're meant to do in this world. And so it was, um, it was a wild time. Amazing. Thank you for that. Yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Can you, it's funny, I, maybe I would normally do this right at the very, very, very beginning, but can you tell the listeners, those who don't know who you are quite yet, what, who you are and what you do? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> hi guys. <laughs> uh, Jen here. Hi, bad. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> we Perfect. just jumped in, you know, with like the weather and creativity and we just, we're just here. <laughs> Tell me about your dark night of the soul. Right. Question one. Let's go into okay, the darkness. When I like meet, you know, you know this, when you meet like friends that you're like, whoa, we've been here before together, right? Like it's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. like soul connection. And I always say, hey, like human question, like when's your birthday? Like human right. question. Do you have a brother or sister? Like human things, you know? So so totally. you, human things. My name's Jen, Jenna, whatever, whatever feels good. Um, and yeah, I was a a business coach. Well, really, if you go back, I was a teacher for eight and a half years and taught little, little nuggets, how to read and kids who were struggling in the school system. So I was an advocate for the, the lowest achieving students in the school and bless your heart. Oh God. I loved it so much. It was so good. Yeah. I woke up continuously with that feeling that there was something different and there was something yeah. more and yeah. originally helped women lose weight, helped women heal their relationship with their bodies. I had healed myself of an eating disorder And the day that I finally understood my addiction and relationship to food, which was hidden with suppressing my emotions and, you know, childhood, Mm, shocking, right. Childhood wonders. Um, You know, I I completely healed my relationship with food. And so I helped women do the same exact thing. And then business kept taking off and became a business coach and Mm -hmm. that kept taking off. And until one day I woke up and it couldn't take off anymore. And Mm -hmm now my work in the world is different. You know, it's, I would love to be like, this is exactly what it is that I do. And this is how I do it. But the truth mm-hmm. is it's still unfolding. 
Yeah. You know, it's, it's unfolding every single day and I'm just in full detachment and surrender of just, all right, where are we going next? And um, Mm -hmm. I've never been in this space in my entire life. I've always known exactly what I'm doing and exactly how I'm doing it. And here's the plan from A to Z. And so um, I'm just, I'm leading at this time. I'm consciously leading what I'm, what I'm being called to consciously lead. It's like the absolute embodiment of surrender of trust. I haven't had, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard. I mean, yeah. I would to be like, you know, there's so many like spiritual teachings. It's like surrender. And, <laughs> beautiful. and it's like, have you ever actually surrendered? Like it is yeah, right. not easy. It is not easy. I remember being in, um, mm-hmm. So I facilitate breath work is like my primary modality. And in, in my first day of training, and it was like a four day intensive and my teacher's this incredible human and he had us sitting in dyads. Are you familiar with dyad, dyad practicing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we we're sitting in dyads, which I have learned to love. I hated them because they made me so viscerally uncomfortable. I now love them and and lead people through them all the time. So we're sitting in a diet. And the first question is, tell me what it is to surrender or tell me what surrender is. And I like my, I got like hot and I was like, surrender is failure. Surrender is giving up. Surrender is like, I was like pissed about it. Like, don't tell me to surrender. Um, And the more, right, the question kept coming back and we're going back and forth and getting deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And by the end of the diet, it was probably eight or 10 minutes I was like, (laughs) surrender is love. Surrender is trust. Surrender is beautiful. Like it was just under all of the, like, I'm scared to go there. I'm scared to go there because I also had like lived in this state of protection and suppression for so long Mm -hmm. that yeah, surrender was a really scary, terrible, like weak Mm -hmm. thing in my mind. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 it's wild when you are programmed that you need control in order to survive, right? Because right. all of our patterns come back to survival, love, belonging, acceptance, you know, like they're the, the basic core needs that we have. Yeah. And it's amazing when we have that program, right? That we're, if you surrender, it, it really feels like you're not going to survive. Like it feels like you're going to yeah. die. And you know, that's a part of you actually does. Yeah. Because the part of you that needs the control so badly and the grip so badly Mm-hmm. she does die away so that you actually can live in that liberation and that power, but it's, it's completely counterintuitive to the programming that we have in our bodies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like all of this, and it's like, I label this as like, I, I don't, I, I label this as like the work, this, like coming back to ourself and rediscovering who we are and what you're in the midst of right now. And this is all like, this is all the reclamation, like everything we're doing, all of this work we're doing. And and it, to me, is like the, it's almost, re- it's rebellious. It's rebellious. And I fucking love that yeah. because we have been programmed intentionally and unintentionally to, this might be the like edge in me and the like mm, kind of pissed off girl, but <laughs> that I feel very validated in it. Like there's been this conditioning, there's been conditioning for centuries yeah. and, and I'm, you know, quite grateful to be living in this time, although it's crazy, I think it always has been kind of crazy, but there's this like rise and, and what you're doing is a, is a pure example of it. Like, no, I'm not going to do the thing because everyone thinks that's what I'm supposed to do. And sure. It made me money, but my soul feels like it's withering away. It's like the ultimate rebellion, the ultimate reclamation to me. And I just think it's really cool. And mm-hmm. thank you for leading by yeah, example. Of course. of course. Are you still working with women in business? Because that's still part of your clientele? I do have women in business for sure. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. I do, I mean, I do support in business, mm-hmm. but not in the ways that I used to. Like I'm not looking at funnels. I'm not mm-hmm. looking at strategies. I'm not talking about sales numbers. I'm, I'm not yeah. in and the, because the truth and the reality is, is that, you know, to really, truly have a growing, thriving business that sustains time, it's, it's so much, you, you know, this it's, it's beyond the business. It's all mm-hmm. stuff within ourselves. And so mm-hmm. I more support the woman behind the business now, instead of the business itself. Mm-hmm. And that is, I mean, that's I, the work that I absolutely love to do. You know, we, mm-hmm. we need that, that support to grow and expand and evolve. You know, I, I think mm-hmm. for so long and 
I don't know how long you've been in business, but it's been a minute for me. And mm -hmm. there's been such a focus on the business, right? Like such a focus on the business and the money and the growth and you enter a mastermind and it's, you're swimming in that times a hundred and it's competition, even though everyone says it's not competition, but it really is. And the energy is, it's, it's, it's so much, it's so heavy mm -hmm. to focus on business growth. And mm -hmm. I don't think that we're meant to as women. I don't think that anyone's meant to focus on business growth day over day, month over mm -hmm. month, year over year. And the, the culture, you know, of, and the conditioning, like what's crazy is we talk about conditioning from the past, right. Mm -hmm. But waking up now to realize the conditioning that happens to us on a day-to-day -day basis, based on what we're consuming on social media or who we're paying mm -hmm. to be coached or mentored by is a whole nother, a whole nother conversation. But, you know, we're not meant to do that as women. Look at our biology, look at our, look, look at our bodies, look at the seasons. Like it's, we're not meant to be that way. Mm -hmm. but it's happened. And so I think mm -hmm. there's more and more people I know that I've seen in my world and my friends and clients and past clients that are like, well, wait a second, what about me? Like the one who's at the leader, who's doing the work, like mm -hmm. what, what about this support and mm -hmm. recognizing that when this gets the support, of course that will grow, but, you know, taking the focus off of the, the one track focus off of the success and the money and, and onto mm -hmm our hearts and our souls and the work that we came here to do, you know, we've, yeah. we've put money and success at the top of the hierarchy. And then mm -hmm. we put anyone who has money and success at the top of the hierarchy with that. Yeah. And it's not about, you know, deconstructing the hierarchy. Jordan Peterson talks about this, where he says, you know, the hierarchy is a, it's a structure of our mind and we yeah. can't good luck trying to change the structure of our mind. <clears throat> it's not about changing the hierarchy of our mind or it's not about decompressing and, and breaking down the hierarchy. It's about recognizing that we as humans have a hierarchy. So just be really conscious of what you're putting at the top of the hierarchy. Because mm -hmm. if we're putting something at the top of the hierarchy that's rooted in what we talked about earlier, patterns or conditionings or wounds or mm -hmm. you know, needing to be seen or needing to be heard or needing to make a certain amount of money, then you're headed toward a wall and you're going to mm -hmm. head there quick. You know, and so yeah. it's that conscious awareness of, of why we're doing what it is that we're doing, how we're doing it and, and what our values really truly are. Yeah. There's a few things that I wanted to speak on. One is that like you were speaking about like money and success in the same money and success, but like, I'm going to say most of the people, like, don't they see success as money? Like they see success is like strictly money. Yeah. They have all the things, they have the money, they're making the, you know, six figures a month, whatever they're doing. Right. What is success to you? How do you break success down? What does that look like? It's completely changed, which feels yeah. so liberating. It's that's a yeah. reclamation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because success, success did used to be really tied to money. You know, I, yeah. I the, the reality is too, is that, you know, I grew up in a home where we didn't, we didn't have anything, you know, as a single mm -hmm. mom working her tail off to raise two kids and mm -hmm. um, afraid that we were going to lose the house, afraid that, mm -hmm. that we were going to not be able to put food on the table. You know, there was a lot of stress around money. And so to me, success was related to money. Mm -hmm. You know, if I could, if I could have money, I could feel this certain way of success. And, mm -hmm. you know, I had all the money, but did I really feel that successful for like one day I did like, mm -hmm. cool, put seven figure, you know, coach in your bio, you feel successful for like a minute right. and then it goes away. Um, yeah. and, you know, now success is completely different. It's, it's, I look at a holistic approach to success, you know, how are my relationships? How's my marriage? Mm -hmm. How is my free time? How, how's my heart? How's my soul? How's my energy? You know, do I have, am I spending my days the way that I would love to spend my days? Am I living my life or mm -hmm. am I a slave to a system that I've built, which is my company, you know, or, yeah or an Instagram account, because I think that these people online need to see me or I need to show up or whatever it is, you know, which so many people don't even realize that they have, that they're enslaved to. And so yeah. now success to me now is I'm happy. I'm alive. I'm, I'm doing what I want to do when I want to do it. And it feels absolutely mm -hmm. incredible. I can sleep in if I want, or I don't, you know, but I, I have autonomy and agency over every single area of my life. Like to me, success is sovereignty. Yeah. versus yeah you know versus it not and so that would that's what it would be for me 
Yes. Thank you for that. I feel like we need to scream that. There was something yeah. else you said earlier. And when I said there's two things and now my brain is like, and if it comes back to me, I will bring it back in. <laughs> it's completely <laughs> left. Um, okay. When you, this is my like nosy mind when you decided that like, okay, I'm burning this all down and taking a break and stepping back. Yeah. Was your husband totally on board or was it like, Ooh, are you sure? Like, what was the, what was that there? How was that? My husband's really, really, really supportive. Yeah. He's really supportive. Um, you know, he's, he's, he, he fully has always trusted me 110% and is truly, I, I don't really know if many humans that are as supportive as him. I'm not support, as supportive as he is. Like a, he helps right. me become more supportive just by the way that he <laughs> models. But yeah, he was, mm-hmm. you know, he was like, whatever you need to do, we're going to figure it out. We're going to make it work and whatever it is yeah. that you need to do. And yeah. allow me to do that, which felt really, really good to have. And I, I wasn't used to having support like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I was always the one that needed to be on or needed to be successful so that everyone else would be okay. Yeah. That yeah. Was my, like some of my core wounding from, from being a little girl. Yeah. My parents divorced at five years old. You're the oldest daughter. Your mom's mm. going through a divorce. My grandfather, mm-hmm. all my grandparents, three of my four grandparents died in, in, in five, no, in three, within three years. Um, oh. My dad was an alcoholic and addicted to some, some fun drugs and mm-hmm. um, left the family, you know? And mm-hmm. so from a very young age, my coding was very much you have to be the happy one and you have to be the successful one. So mm-hmm. what did I do? I crushed school. I was, I got mm-hmm. I had three college degrees. I don't recommend that. You don't need that many, trust me. And, um, you know, it was just succeed because if mm-hmm. you can succeed, then everyone else will be okay. And so it was yeah. a huge, a huge code and a huge condition to break through, to be on a couch crying and, and be depressed and have my husband look at me. And, and I didn't feel like I was lovable. I didn't feel like yeah. I was worthy of receiving love, let alone anything else, you know, it was, yeah. and you know, when my friends still liked me, if I'm not, that was another thing too, is that I was really the main one of my friends, like with a lot of my friends, a handful of my friends, I was the one that they would call when everything happened. And I had some friends mm-hmm. at the time that were going through some really dark stuff in their lives and I couldn't help them. Like I said, I'm like, you need a therapist. I can't be your support anymore. Like I cannot do this. My mental health is not in a good place. And unfortunately I had a friendship end because of it. And so, you know, it, it's, it, it just, those core wounds, you know, they, yeah. they come up and then they're tested and you have an opportunity mm-hmm. to heal them. And just cause you heal them doesn't mean that everything is going to be the same, mm-hmm. you know? And so I'm grateful that it strengthened my relationship with my husband and my family, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it also, you know, a couple of, a couple of them weekend and one faded away and I had to be okay with that. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. I have a really out of left field question and I don't know why I feel to ask this, but I, I, um, <laughs> it's not important. It's totally irrelevant, but it's on my mind. Cause I, <laughs> I'm in the middle of planning a trip. Do you have any fun adventures? What do you, what do you guys, what <laughs> I like it. Okay. I'm obsessed with Airbnb. This is so out of left field, but it's like right in the center of my mind, obsessed with it. And so I'm always curious about, and I'm like deep in travel planning right now. So I'm always curious about where people are going and what they're doing and how they travel and how they, Oh, so we're going to go to Paris for three nights. And then we're heading to Ibiza and we're going to, my partner and I were like, where do you, where have you always wanted to go? And you haven't gone. And Ibiza was on both of our lists. So and good. I think, I think we're forgetting how old we are, but we both really want to party. Like we're 20 just for like a couple days. So we're like, well, where's the best place? A couple? Absolutely not. No, yeah, we went to like a one and you're like, it's, this. it's going to be a bad scene. We went to a DJ show in we anyways, last weekend and the DJ we went to see who we were like, so excited to see, uh, didn't come on until 12 when we got there at eight, like for the first, anyways, it, we left two songs in. So we're like, gotta go to bed. This is such a bad thing. So, you know, big high hopes. And anyway, so yeah. Do you and your love have any, now that you're not like strapped to your business and like at the beck and call of everything and everyone, how are you going to celebrate your, your spaciousness? 
Yeah. I mean, we've been living it for a while now, which has been super yeah. nice, but our favorite place to go is Costa Rica. That's, yeah. that's my, that's why I asked them, like, are you going like out of country? You coming to the mm-hmm. state? What's your vibe? Costa Rica is mm-hmm. my, yeah. one of my favorite places to go to. It just, yeah. it grounds you. It hugs you. It's like it a does. ceremony every day that you're there, it, yes. but it's also, there's the adventures and the waterfalls and the ocean and the mm-hmm. snorkeling. And, you know, there's, Costa Rica is just my, like, if it's like, mm-hmm. if it's like, Hey, you've got a week where you're going to go. And I not in the, like going to try something new mode. You know how you just yeah. have those vacations that yeah. you go, it's like going back home. Mm-hmm. Costa Rica would be my place. So where in Costa Rica do you like? I like going down to like Dominical and Evita. Okay. Yeah. My partner was living in Costa for the last two years and, um, yeah, there was this like, do we move to Costa Rica? Do we come here? So there, it, it like yeah. it floats in our there's in so our mind. Many, so many um, previous Canadians in Costa Rica. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people left when the world went sideways. They were like, yeah. I'm out, yeah. <laughs> and they have not come back. They no, <laughs> they shouldn't. Now is not no, the time to come back. They are, <laughs> they are there. They are there. Yeah. But honestly, too. There's something that amazes me about the U.S. You know, it's kind of one of those things that nobody really like, like, yeah, when you run to Paris and Ibiza and Greece, you know, of course, mm-hmm. but there's, there's aspects, there's so many parts of the U.S. My husband and I mm-hmm. lived in them for a year and yeah. just completely explored and the United States absolutely blows. I mean, Canada's crazy beautiful too, but yeah. there's so many parts of the U.S. that just completely yeah. blew me away. Like California, we've spent like, gosh, almost four or five months in California and we didn't even mm-hmm. scratch the surface of it like the the landscape and the ocean and the the trees like there's just California itself could be like seven different countries yeah in what it is that you're experiencing yeah isn't there like skiing in California like yes you can surf yeah. and like drive an hour or two hours and ski the same the same day blows my mind um, yeah, well, I, my dream, I love it. Okay. Maybe now I have questions about living in a van because I have a dream. I don't know if I could actually do it with my life in this moment, but to, I want a van life. I want, I just love it. Maybe for like three to six months max. How long were you guys in it? A year? Yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah. Well, it oh. wasn't a van. I have to preface with that. Everyone assumed okay. it was a 40 foot RV. Okay. This thing was okay. Okay. Huge. Because I told my husband, if we're going to live in it, with a dog. And then I ended yeah. up picking up another dog in San Diego. I was like, we have got to, it's got to be big enough that yeah, like, yeah. I'm not like, I don't need to hear you when you go to the bathroom, like if yeah. you're in business for an entire year. Yeah. So we got a 40 foot RV. We pulled our Jeep behind. We sold our house in Michigan. This is right when the world started going absolutely bonkers. And we were okay. like, get us out. And so yeah. it, we got out and we, um, we just traveled. We had everything planned. And then like four times my husband would plan like the whole thing out, like campgrounds, everything. And then I would like wake up and I'm like, babe, we really got to go to the mountains. And we would just scratch the whole plan. So like, don't, <laughs> don't really plan much. You kind of have to yeah. have a plan, but it was surreal. I mean, there's, there's no freedom like it because mm-hmm. you're not tied anywhere. You don't mm-hmm. have attachments besides what you physically are in, you know, mm-hmm. you just, you listen to your heart and your soul and where it is that you're led and you're guided to go and you just get in the car and you or the the RV and you just go like there's, you know, and Mm -hmm. you don't really know why you're being led to certain places, right? It's the great Mm -hmm. mystery of life. Like you're like, Mm -hmm. why are we going to Idaho? And Mm -hmm. then you drive and you meet this one person and have this one conversation Uh and this like one part of you completely gets, you know, blown open and you're like, Oh my God, that's why we're in Idaho. And so mm-hmm. we just, it's the greatest adventure. We miss it actually a lot. We're, we're talking about completely changing our life around and, and doing parts of it again. Um, not a whole art. And I wouldn't live in a full RV now that I have, a, you know, that I've done this, that I've been out of it that long, but yeah. we miss, we miss the adventure piece because there's, there's nothing like it. It's there's, mm-hmm. you can't go on vacation like it. Like there's nothing, no feeling that can even come close to comparing. I feel like the selling of the house and like leaving everything and just going on a whim would have been also a huge practice in detachment and surrender and trust. And yeah. And was that, yeah, that was, you were still like in the thick of your business at that point, weren't you? 
Yeah, I actually had just started my business coaching business. Um, mm -hmm. I really didn't like plan on starting my business coaching business. It was, mm -hmm. my business was crushing it. You know, the world shut down and my business mm -hmm. just kept crushing it because I've, I, you know, I've got six and a half years of leadership degrees and I was a teacher for eight years and I just, yeah. I know people, you know, like I, I yeah. just I've studied people and I've helped people in my entire life. And so, you know, when everything was shutting down, I just changed the way I did things because I understood that people were changing and they needed a different type of support. Right. I've always mm -hmm. been, you could call it being a good marketer or salesperson, but I, I don't see it as marketing and sales. I see it as connecting with your audience and having yeah. something people want to purchase. Yeah. And, you know, so when I was crushing it, a ton of my friends that I was in masterminds with at the time were like, can you help me do this? And I couldn't do it, help them all on the side. So I just created a huge program on it. And that's mm -hmm. how I became a business coach. And I just yeah. kept taking off. So yeah, there was a lot of changes at that time. I mean, business changes. Yeah, we, we were both born and raised in Michigan. So we just were like, we're done. We can't do it anymore. Like the, it was crazy in Michigan. Um, and we didn't mm -hmm. believe in what was happening. And how mm -hmm. long do you stay in a place where you don't believe in what's happening before you listen mm -hmm. to your own agency and just go? Yeah. And so that's what we did. Congratulations. Thank you. I was, yeah, I, without going deep into it, I was like, I was in a relationship at the time where I wanted to leave and he was like, no, we got to stay. We got to like anchor in, we got to stay. And I was like, we don't got to stay. We got to go. <laughs> and we got to go. And I, and I stayed. And then that relationship ended. And my partner who I'm with now, we've known each other for a few years. We've worked together in, in some spaces and he was living in Costa Rica. And I, as that relationship was coming to an end, I was like, I'm moving to Mexico. I'm selling everything I own. So I sold everything. Oh my gosh. And then started a relationship with my love who was oh. moving back to BC from Costa Rica. And so I was like, I have absolutely nothing. I own nothing and we're staying here. Okay. We're staying here. Okay. <laughs> and so I still have this, like, ah, I want to go. I want to go. So hearing your stories is like, it's really like it's feeding something in me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, um, there's a, it's a soul calling really. Yeah. It, it's, um, you know, it's the ultimate ultimate detachment right like who mm -hmm. are you when when you're not defined by the house that you live in the, the city that you're in you know like mm -hmm. like who are you when you don't have friends to see and meet up with and you, your routine yeah. structure like that was what there were so many so many things that we learned that I didn't even realize I relied on right like like a routine or like a structure mm -hmm. like I'd wake up and I would go to my my best friend back in Michigan owned a gym and we would go there every morning and mm -hmm. we'd start our day off with all of our friends you know like mm -hmm. every morning that was just the way that we did it and to then wake up and be like I, and I'm in the middle of nowhere with my husband and my dogs like you right know, it's, it's definitely different but we, we say that it, it it progressed our marriage like 10 years because mm. you can't there's no hiding. There's no avoidance where I'm, a, mm -hmm. I used to be a master avoider and it's like, there's no avoiding, you know, there's, you can't escape. You're in an RV with yeah. the person that you're married to. So buckle up. You're going to get good at communicating really quick because you don't have a yeah. choice. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Actually. I think that's really amazing. Uh, okay. Question. What would you just, I'm just, I feel as though at least someone, if not lots of people listening, feel and coming back to the earlier part of our conversations in that piece of like burning it down and yeah. following what actually feels like your truth and and the direction you need to go there's a ton of fear in that there's a ton of like oh what ifs I don't know do you have any like wise words of wisdom mm -hmm. for the woman who is in that that like teeter-totter space yeah. or maybe she's not even at the teeter-totter yet but she's like oh I think there's something else yeah for sure well, I mean, I have so many different words of wisdom for this one. You know, it's, I think the more that a woman is deeply in connection and can trust her own intuition, the easier that the decision is, you know, like I, I look back at my connection with my, my intuition in so many different areas of my life. Like something as simple as it's not simple actually, but I, I dated a guy for six and a half years before I met my husband. And one day I just woke up and it was like, I have to break up with him. Nothing was wrong. It was a great relationship, incredible human, but I just mm -hmm. was like, I've got to, this isn't it. And I, you know, ended their relationship of six and a half years. And 
was just my gut knew that it wasn't it, you know, and I had to mm-hmm. listen. And same thing with leaving, you know, the education system. You know, I had mm-hmm. a master's and a specialist degree in leadership and administration, and I was on my way to becoming a principal. Like I was, I was doing it. I was in, and I was in an incredible district, top three district in the state of Michigan. Um, our our school was voted number one elementary school in the state, and. Mm-hmm. I woke up one day and I was like, there's something more, you know, and I had, I had the career path. I had every, Mm -hmm. I had the respect of everyone in administration. Like Mm -hmm. I had the job when the job was open and I just, I woke up and I just, I had to follow that little intuition and that voice that said that there was something more. And so number one would be a really strong connection and a trust within yourself. And Mm -hmm. you know this just as well as anyone I'm sure is that as women, one of the first things that that I believe you have to reclaim because we've lost it throughout our years is a trust within yourself. Yeah. And you know, having that trust with yourself, a trust within a higher power will take you so far, so, so, so far. And then the next thing would have to be, you know, the trust within yourself and then the belief that you have the ability. Mm-hmm. You know, like you really do have the ability to do whatever it is. It's it's one of the first things that I heard as an entrepreneur on someone's podcast was that if a vision is in you, it's for you. Yeah. And so you have to have the belief that you're going to know what to do. And if you don't know what to do, you're going to have the courage to get support in it. Mm -hmm. And I think with trust and with belief, that decision's a lot easier to make. Mm -hmm. Obviously make sure that you've got safety and security, you know, Mm -hmm. like I, I know that it's a big thing. I don't know how you feel about this, but you know, there's a lot of people on the internet that are like, that have been saying this for years of like, take the leap and the net will appear, like leave Mm. the job, quit the business, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you do that and you don't have a strong, like security blanket, that can be like legitimately traumatizing to your system. It can jack up your nervous system and it can get you in a state of fight, flight or freeze. And you're not going to be able to do anything moving forward. Yeah. And so whatever safety that looks like, whatever support that looks like, just make sure you have it, you know, like mm-hmm. make sure that you have that because otherwise you're not going to be able to do the things that you want to do. And yeah. I've unfortunately people, so many people have come into my programs and, you know, when I was doing business coaching and my programs and my one-on-one and my masterminds and they're like, well, I did it. I took the leap and I left and I've got, you know, a thousand dollars to my name. And so this has to work. And I'm like, who mm-hmm. you? why, why did you do that? You know, like you're putting yourself in a state where you're literally not safe. And if you're not, we know this Maslow's hierarchy of needs, like basic core fundamental as a human. Like if you don't have safety and security, you Mm -hmm. cannot self-actualize, meaning you cannot live out your max potential right Mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So the trust, the belief, the safety, and the security are going to be, and then get support, you know, whether it's a friend or a coach or a therapist or whoever it is, just like have someone to support you along the way. You can't see what you can't see. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't think that I, I know I wouldn't have been any of the places that I was at if I didn't seek that support. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're not meant to do this alone. I've, I've been, that's, that's been coming up a lot lately in my communities is like, yeah, there's a reason we seek community. Like there's a part of us that knows that, you know, I can't do this alone. You know, it takes a village to raise a child. Yeah. We've sat in circles for centuries. Like it, we're, we come together. Uh, even us lone wolves who like to be introverted and I, I'm sure put introverted in your mouth. I mean, I'm generally introverted, but there's, there's, yeah, there's so much potency in, in being with others mm-hmm. in a, in a good way, in a good way. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and that's another, you know, another coding that we've got to break, you know, another, another piece of conditioning that we have to break, you know, so many women do have that sisterhood wound or they've, you know, Mm -hmm. come into this lifetime with the witch wound or whatever we want to call it. Like there's, Mm -hmm. it can be difficult to, to trust others, you know, and to open yourself up and be vulnerable and say, Hey, I actually don't know what I'm doing here. Or I'm actually struggling Mm -hmm. here, or this isn't working, you know, and and Mm -hmm. you've got this and whether you pay for that support via a coach or a healer or a mentor or guide or whatever it is, or you just have, you know, good people in your life that support you in those areas. It's God, it's so needed. We're not shame and darkness and fear thrive in isolation. You know, the mm-hmm. shadow thrives mm-hmm. in the darkness. So bring it out, bring it to the light mm-hmm. and 
that that is another reclamation and power right of really mm -hmm. truly bringing it up and and getting the support that yeah we've all needed at some point in time absolutely when you speak of trusting yourself have you like have you always trusted yourself i know that you had to like step into that kind of leader role really young and that support role really young so maybe that did just build for you or was just there but how do you, like, what do you, what would you say to the women who are like, I don't even know how to trust myself. Like, what do you mean trust myself? I don't even know what that means, what that looks like. Mm -hmm. What's, it's what's there? That you asked this because I have a post that I've been sitting on for like, post for, it. Yeah. For, for quite some time um, about this is I, I did always have that trust. I'll, I'll be super yeah. honest with you. And I, I did, but I broke it at many point in times that I had to get it back. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, like I said, I grew up early and, and my mom always, <laughs> She never made decisions for me. She would always be like, well, what does your intuition say? And oh. I used to hate it. I wanted to throw yeah. anything at her. I'm like, would you just yeah. give me an answer? And she's like, yeah. I can't, it's the decision to make. You know, by the time I'm like 10, I'm like, just tell me. Um, yeah. But you know, I lost that trust when I battled an eating disorder. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, of course I lost that trust in myself. Mm -hmm. I lost that trust um, actually last year when I, I made a, a difficult decision. Um, I went against the grain. I, I was somebody that I trusted and I, it was a very difficult thing. And she questioned my character and she told me I wasn't the person that she thought that I was. And because I just simply stated the truth and asked for something mm -hmm. that was fine. And mm -hmm. I literally froze in that moment. Like my body froze and I went into a complete freeze response. There was a lot around that, that I'm not going to get mm -hmm. into, but um, I completely froze. And the core story when I froze was I can't trust myself to make good decisions. And yeah. when I speak the truth, I'm not a good person. Right. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've had to work through that tremendously mm -hmm. over just the past year to mm -hmm. really recognize that that is not the truth. And mm -hmm. even though my body has believed it and I've, I've, I've gone through a lot, a lot, a lot of of EMDR, of somatic work to continue mm -hmm. to unravel and recode that. And so, you know, if someone's listening and they're like, well, how do I, how do I not, or how do I don't have that? How do I get that? I would say, explore the core story that's keeping that belief alive. Yeah. You know, there's a core story or there's a core memory that's yeah. keeping that belief true. And that's yeah. keeping that pathway deeply, deeply, deeply encoded in your, in your psyche. And that's yeah. truly keeping the story alive in your cells. You, yeah. know, you know this working with you know doing breath work and, and understanding somatics and is that these these stories become like just states of being that then solidify into traits and it's not that yeah. you're an untrustworthy person it's that something happened that put you in that state and that state solidified over time mm -hmm. and so again get support and exploring what that core story is and rewiring and and releasing and getting that story out of your body it does not belong mm -hmm. there it's a lie it's an illusion it's not true mm -hmm. and understanding you know why you took that on you know like mm -hmm. from the very beginning because a lot of people will get to the core story but they don't know why how that they've actually believed that core story you know and you've yeah. got to unravel the entire system around it and mm -hmm. so that you can get into a, a space where you realize like you you are trustworthy have you yeah. ever been able to no, like I'm sure there's been times but mm -hmm. you're now learning how to trust just like just like anything else so mm -hmm. it can be a slow and um tumultuous journey at times mm -hmm. right but mm -hmm. I think it's a journey always worth taking because yeah, if you can't trust you, who can you trust in this world? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I would even add to that too, something like to set yourself set yourself up for success in the learning to trust yourself too. So, you know, like making a list of what are things that you, you kind of like know you're going to do, you know, like I'm going to brush my teeth in the morning. I'm going to walk my dog. I'm going to go to the gym, mm -hmm. you know, for some, maybe, maybe that, maybe that's an edgy one for someone, but to start making a list of, of really like, these are quite plausible that I'm going to do and, and just watch yourself do the thing that you say you're going to do and really get into the practice of, of doing those little things that you said you're going to do. I'm going to floss. I'm going to drink water, you know, all of those things. Yeah. I'm going to eat food. Yeah. Yeah. We mm -hmm. build, you know, it's so, it's a good point because we build trust in the little moments of life. 
Mm-hmm. It's like in the little things like that. Of, mm-hmm. I said I was going to take a walk today. And so I got myself outside and took a walk, right? Like, yeah. Those are these little steps that build the trust. You know, as humans, unfortunately, in 2024, like we don't like the little things, right? Everyone wants big things and instant gratification. Mm-hmm. They want the mm-hmm. result yesterday, but that's a that's a conditioning that we've got to break because it's the small little steps that add up to the big, big, big abilities. Yeah, and it's like in that this is a little bit different, but same feeling I get with that is like it's the small, it's the small things too, that are so awe-inspiring. Like I have this really beautiful bouquet of fresh flowers and it's like watching the color of this one flower each day change. It's like, it's this, it's those little, it's the small moments, you know, it's the moments where your dog is doing this, the cutest thing and, and it catches your attention and there's this laugh or a moment with your love. Like it's these, it is these subtle, small moments in life that really actually are what matter you know, it's not the huge trip that you take, but it was that moment on the flight yeah. where you both looked out the window and you could see the sun rising, you know, yeah. it's like, oh yeah, yeah it's, it's so the little true. things. Mm-hmm. So true. Yeah. We, but you've got to, we've got to slow down to, and, and really condition ourselves to see those and to live yeah. those. You yeah. Know? I remember trying to slow myself down. God, it felt like I was, it literally felt like I was sick and I was dying. Yeah. You know, when you're programmed to go so quick, which so many yeah. of us are in this day and age, the, the age of instant gratification and mm-hmm. consumption overhaul and, you know, everything's available at your fingertips. It's, it's hard mm-hmm. to slow down mm-hmm. and choose peace, mm-hmm. you know, like we're, we're revved up all the time. And so mm-hmm. that in and of itself, you know, you probably, the last time I was on an airplane, it was sunrise air, you know, sunrise. Mm. Flight. And it's like my, right. I'm like things open. I'm like, how is it what, like, how are people not looking out, <laughs> outside right now? Because every single window, except for mine on the entire plane was closed every window. And I'm yeah. sitting here crying, right. Cause mm-hmm. and like the, it changes every single mm-hmm. second. It's ch- and then you look here and you look here and everything. <laughs> I'm literally sitting here like crying just feeling the divinity of what life is right yeah and I'm literally looking around to like share the moment with someone. <laughs> they're all snoring my husband wasn't with me on this flight and I'm like looking around and people are sleeping or they're on their phones or they're watching mm-hmm. tv and I'm like oh my god and then the flight attendant walked by and I was like how are people not looking at this and he goes nobody ever does I was like, wow. oh my gosh right and you're a plant who I don't know how many people sit on a plane a lot of people so right? many so many people, but, but nobody's just enjoying one of the, the, the cheapest, easiest, free yeah. things yeah. we have to just bring us back into our divinity and our purest essence, which is yeah. a nature. It's a sunset. It happens twice every day. Like, yeah. you know, sunrise, sunset, Yeah, but no one's looking at it, you know? And so it's, um, it's going against what mm-hmm. we have been wired to live. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, we're all in this hustle, go, go, go. And like to bring in, you know, like masculine feminine energetics, because that feels to be like a really popular talking point these days. People seem to get it. We're like in that like masculine energy, which we all need. We all have it. We need it. And it's the, even the, even like, okay, I need to slow down. Even the energy with like, I need to slow down is forceful, pushing. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, like, that's not, that's not going to invite us into a slow. It's the, it's the being, it's the moments of being like you just described on the plane. That is, that is the thing. That is it. And you didn't have to try to do that. You didn't have to push to do that. You were just simply being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 But being is so it's difficult. It's so difficult. I first learned masculine feminine energetics. I mean, what five-ish years ago now and and it's like the magic's in the being and I was like oh my god like the being (laughs) you know like oh my god the being because I would literally wake up and go more yeah I couldn't I didn't even need to think about it my body was autopilot the nervous system just goes Mm -hmm. you know and so it's it it is difficult to to be Mm -hmm. or to have peace or calm Mm -hmm. when so many people are living in a body that's not regulated and that doesn't know how to be regulated yeah. And doesn't even know like that. It's crazy, right? That, that 
regulation to some people can feel dangerous. It can feel not yeah, right. totally. And then we wonder why so many women, you know, we can talk men too, but there's so much disease. There's so many mm -hmm. cycle problems, painful periods, PCOS, stomach mm -hmm. issues, digestion problems, allergies, right? There's so the, the body's like, please, 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 please like stop. I, when I was going through this, um, it was over a year ago now my body had got shingles mm. and I, I was, you know, 30, what, 33 years old at the time. And I broke out in shingles and I was like, shingles. Yeah. My mother -in -law was like, that's what the old people get. And I was like, I'm yeah. Like, yeah, Linda. I'm like, I know what the old people get. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm weirded out by it. That and, and a friend of mine at the time was like, why haven't you told me how stressed you are? Mm -hmm. And I looked at her and I go, I didn't even know I was stressed. Like I had no idea I was stressed out. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't stressed, you know? And so yeah. that was a huge wake up call for me. And thank God it was shingles and not anything more serious, like truly mm -hmm. thank God in that sense. But, you know, my body didn't know calm, yeah. regulated peace. Your baseline was stress. My baseline was stress. Yeah. 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 I relate to that so much for like the first 15 years of my working career. Um, yeah, I was in fitness as well. I was running a personal training business and busy, 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 keeping myself really, really busy. And every time I go to my naturopath or my massage therapist, any any body worker, any practitioner that I would see, how's your stress levels? And I was like, I'm good. I don't feel stressed. Yeah. I don't have I'm nothing is stressful. I love yeah. my job. It was like, Yeah. I like oh yeah, I would have put every penny that I owned on, I do not have stress. And it was like, I would pride myself on that. <laughs> no stress. Meanwhile, taking client texts at 11 PM at 5 AM, like right. running rampant, being late for things. So I'm trying to get to all the things. Oh God. Right. Hindsight. <laughs> yeah. Hindsight. You're like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Sweet, Sweet little body. You did good. Yeah. yeah Pat you on the back. Oh, you know, and, and I'm, I'm sure you were similar. It's like crush, you know, like crush school or sports, you know, like you just give me a, give me a task and I'll get it done yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'll do it better mm -hmm. than anyone else. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's, it's how so many, and I working in the school system, that's how a lot of little girls are wired, you yeah. know, K through fourth grade building. And you saw that mm -hmm. coding happen. Kindergarten, you saw it five years old. You saw it. And so you think about our bodies, if we yeah. were in that from five years old until, you know, 25, 35 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The body gets to a point where like homegirl, you are incredibly stressed and it's not yeah. you anymore. Like, yeah. Slow down and wake up and yeah, slow down and you wake up and you have a dark night of the year. <laughs> And you come out on the other side and you are just being, you're all of a sudden being and you're like, oh shit, this is what it is. Okay. Great. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Can you share with the world where, like where we find you and what's going on in your world and all the juicy yeah. bits? Yeah. Yeah. Well, currently I am on Instagram, um, which is, you know, where I'm at majority of the time. If you want to reach me, I'm there. Mm -hmm. And really, I mean, that's, that's where I'm always at. And I do have my membership that supports people, really the leaders of the world and awakening to different levels within themselves and within mm -hmm. to achieve deeper levels and bigger levels of success without. And mm -hmm. um, that's really my baby right now. I do intensives as well, which are really fun, but those are, that's the work that, that I'm led to do in this moment. And so I'm, I'm just listening and I'm there. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you for that. I'll grab those links from you and pop them in. Yeah. Any, any last bits that are present for you that you want to speak? Mm. Mm -hmm. I love that this podcast is called, is, is about reclamation. It's, mm. it's really mm -hmm. fun, you know, and when you first asked me of like, what are you reclaiming? And it was the creativity. And then it makes you realize that if you're, if you're reclaiming one aspect of yourself, there's typically so many other things attached to it, you know, yeah, yeah. you really can't just reclaim one thing at a time, mm -hmm. right? There's so many They're different threaded things. together. They're so threaded together. Yeah. They're so threaded together. And, um, you know, it's cool to be having these conversations and in, in an era where 
women really truly are being asked to reclaim. I think men are as well. It's just different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But everyone's the collective waking up more and more and, and this mm -hmm. this topic and these conversations are super important. So mm -hmm. thank you for having me. And yeah. Yeah, my sweet pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for being a yes. Yes. For being a yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll pop this out, um, get all the links in cool. and share it with the world so everyone can find cool. you and love up on you and mm -hmm, follow your journeys potentially in the not the RV. I don't know how you're gonna do it if you're not in the RV, but <laughs> I think we're gonna do like a um we'll we'll do Airbnbs. Ah uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll, bop, we'll uh drive to a place because that's really what we love is being able mm -hmm. to drive and spend like three to six weeks in one place. Yeah, yeah. Place, you know? And so yeah. we're gonna kind of do that for different places. Yeah, sounds ideal. Yes. You'll have like Kyla and her little wiener dog like <laughs> sneaking behind you hi you <laughs> great really spot do it you really should do it I know I know good stuff yeah on. well we talk yeah we talk about it my probably nothing honestly my partner I think from living in Costa and he was trying to he's a high performance coach and was having a really hard time like building the business he wanted because like the internet would go down and like you can't have meetings and you can't do in-persons so easily and when he came back to North America, he was like, oh, I'm going to build, I'm going to build here and like, can I can go to meetings and can have conferences and like can like do the thing. So he's feeling like really anchored right now. And he's a wild one. And I know that he can only be anchored for so long. So I'm just yeah, giving yeah. it time. Um, we are actually planning to spend our winters like down the Baja. So we're going to drive and like road trip down so that he can surf the whole way down. So there is adventure in our future. Yeah. Um, but it's in a very specific, like down the coast into the Baja. Whereas I'm, I'm like, can we just like, <laughs> can we go to the mountains? Can we come into yeah. the, let's just leave the ocean for a, for a hot minute. Yeah. It's coming. There's he adventure coming. Around. He could, he could surf all in, um, if he's not sold on Baja, you can, surf, you guys can do San Diego. You can do so many different parts of California. Yeah. It does get dicey. That's part of the reason why we changed course because we were supposed to do Utah, Colorado, a bunch of stuff. And then my husband met a friend to surf in San Diego. And then he decided to identify as, as a, as a pretty professional surfer, even though he'd mm. only done it twice. And so then he, oh, wanted, mm -hmm. he wanted to surf up the coast. He's a, he's a natural surfer. He's a, he's a snowboarder. So he crushed it. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got to like San Jose area in California and the water was so fucking dicey. Okay. And they call it like the red triangle because there's a ton of shark attacks. Like it's really not. Oh but anything below that yeah you could you guys could surf in in southern california and then you really do just bop over for like an hour and you're in the mountains yeah 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 all right that might be our compromise yeah thanks for that is there surf in texas no surf in texas no, we wait we wake surf okay we live we live near well we live on like the neighborhood is a lake neighborhood um, and then there's the big, la bigger lake that's on the other side of the dam. And so we wake surf a lot. Okay. Well, really any, really, you could do it year round with a wetsuit. Um, but Texas like coast is not, is not surfable. Okay. And it's not pretty. That's why we, it's not pretty Texas coast. No. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, parts of Texas coast is, but the majority of it isn't, it's just, it's not okay. like beaches and beautiful. It's because mm. Yeah, it's the Gulf, so it's not the prettiest. Okay. But um, that's a part of the reason why, you know, we, there's such community here, like families, like my my actual family is here. My brother and sister-in-law and the kids moved here. Oh. Um, like our, it's like our soul family is here and it's- So good. Yeah, it's so incredible. You know, like it feels like I'm in college all the time, but this grown oh. it's, you know, like it's, it's beautiful, but also he misses surfing, you know, mm -hmm. we miss the ocean. We miss different parts of the U S we miss the mountains. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's why I think we're going to split it up and, you know, spend a couple months in Montana in the winter. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Yes. And surfing in the summer. So it's a good life. This life gets to be good. It gets to be good. This life gets to be really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when are you guys yeah. going to on your trip? We're leaving in June. We're going to do most of the month of June. Nice. Is your dog? Mm -hmm. No, we have two dogs and they're going to stay put. 
And yeah, we brought a rescue home from Costa. So she's, oh. she's so beautiful. And I already had, I have a senior mini wiener dog. Who's I think the cutest thing in the whole world, but that's, that's just me. And, uh, the two of them are so polar opposites. Cause he's Tucker, he's almost 13. He's just a little eight pound wean and like his maintenance level is low. He wants to sleep all day. And like, he doesn't really care about walking, like pop him into the yard and he's fine. Whereas Paloma is three is literally a jungle dog. She has more energy than I, I even know exists in any living thing. And so to have one person like watch them both, it's just like, you're asking, it's like you have, it's a lot. So we're splitting them up and <laughs> it's a bit of a mission. So Aww. So no, they're not coming. If, if we like go down to the Baja for a few months in the winter, they'll obviously come with us and we'll drive, but no, they're going to stay and we're going to go have a parent, a parent away week or month. How did she do in the yeah. snow? She loved it. She? So the first day it snowed, we popped the door open and she stood at the, she stood at the door and like looked viciously all around and let out one really bizarre bark and ran back into the house and then beelined it back out the door and was like, I'm here for this. So she loved it. That's so good. That's it was so, so good. sweet. Yeah. We rent, we, we got our dog from our, she's a Belgian Malinois pit bull mix. Oh, she's a fucking different type of dog. She's a yeah. Dog. We've always rescued pit bulls and like pit labs. And so my one's a pit lab. She's an angel, an angel, like a healer, an angel, an angel. The yeah. other one is a manic psychopath. And we got her when we were in San Diego from Baja. She, she was taken from the streets of Baja, uh -huh. so Michigan. We drove to Michigan for Christmas one year, last summer or last winter. And she literally was like, fuck this, get me out of the snow. Like she would, she would not go outside to pee. Like we'd have to put her outside and she just, she wouldn't move and she'd pee. And she'd just look at you like so angry. And I'm like, girl, we're going to spend some time in winter. You're going to have to, you're going to have to like, you left your Figure it out. No roots a long time ago. Like, mm -hmm. but, so that's, that's good. That, that's good that she was good at it. Oh, she loves so, it. Yeah. So yeah. Good. So good. So good. Thank you so much for hanging with me. Yeah, of course. Thank you for everything. Nice work. Yeah. That's just incredible. How long yeah. have you had it? Oh, she's fresh. January. Nice. And I've just been like hammering. You know what I did? So I, <laughs> I like made a list of a bunch of women that I have followed, look up to appreciate. And also was like, Ooh, that feels like an edgy ask. And then I just asked all of them and they've all said yes, including you. So thank you. Oh, I so it's that. been this, yeah, it's been this like year of like, just fucking ask, like, why are you not just asking? Yeah. So I'm asking it's and it's been really fun. Still really quickly. Yeah. You know, totally. Like truly it does. When you realize yep. that people are, people are people are people. Mm -hmm. and it just doesn't, mm -hmm. doesn't fucking matter. You know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's been a moment. Yeah, it's just people are people are people yeah no matter yeah. what good, bad or everything in between exactly mm -hmm. mm, that's good stuff well, good so I'll I'll send an email out when it's uh it actually might not be out until closer to the summer I've like I've really <laughs> good for you I'm like set. I don't have to record anything. I'm it's so good. So thank you for that. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep you posted. So no rush on sending me a bio, but if you're like, I'm bored, I'm going to send her a bio, pop it over and I'll get it edited soon. And then it's just there and ready. And I'll let you know when it's coming out. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. You too. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.